Hi, I'm Prof L. Welcome to Chemistry Matters. And today I am going to tell you a little trick that is going to make it a lot easier for you to pass your exams. So one of the questions that I get asked so often by students is, what equations do I have to know in order to pass the exam? And the answer to that is, in fact, you don't actually have to know any equations because the trick I'm gonna teach you is going to allow you to actually figure out what equation you need to use in any particular situation. And that's gotta be a good thing. So let's have a look at a nice, simple mathematical equation. There we go, three equals six upon two. So what does it actually mean? Well, what's an equation need? Well, an equation needs a left-hand side, it needs a right-hand side, and it needs an equal sign. And most importantly, what you've got on the left-hand side has gotta be the same numerically in this occasion as the right-hand side. So what have we got on the left-hand side? We've got three. What have we got on the right-hand side? We've got six divided by two. Six divided by two equals three. Left-hand side, three. Right-hand side, three. We've got an equal sign there. It's all good. And you're used to that. You know all about mathematical equations. You've been using these since the first time you went to school. Now, those are equations in terms of numbers. Now, we're going to be talking in chemistry a lot about equations that, yes, involve numbers, but also equations that involve units. Because whenever we make a measurement in science, that number has got an associated unit. And what we're gonna to see today is that not only do the numbers on both sides of an equation have to be the same, the units on both sides of an equation have to be the same as well. Now this has got a fancy name, this is called dimensional analysis. We don't have to call it that, but it is a great trick and it does make remembering equations a lot, lot easier. Let's start off by looking not at a chemistry example, but of all things, an athletics example. So at the time that this video uh, is being shot, the world record for the men's 100 meter sprint is 9.58 seconds. Let's ask a question. If somebody can run 100 meters in 9.58 seconds, what is their average speed? So in other words, how fast are they running, basically? That's, that's the question that we're asking. So in order to answer that question, we are going to need to use an equation. What's the equation that we're going to use? Well, we might not know at the moment. Let's assume we don't know what the equation we're gonna use is. What do we know? We know what we wanna find. We wanna find what the unit of speed is. And that's the key to this whole thing. If we know what the unit is of the measurement that we're after, we can calculate or we can determine what the correct equation is to use here. Okay, what's the unit of speed? Well, there are actually a few units of speed. If you're driving in your car, then the speed that you're traveling is probably measured uh, in your car in terms of kilometers per hour. That's one particular unit for speed. Another one, and that's gonna be useful in this case, in fact, is going to be the meter per second, okay? You travel so many meters in so many seconds. So the unit of speed, or as we could call it velocity, same thing, is the meter per second. You'll have seen meter per second written like this. You'll also see meter per second written like that. Meter second to the minus one. We're not gonna go too much into that today, but all that you need to know is this is the same as that, meter divided by second, meter divided by second, the same thing. And that's the guts to this whole trick, this whole dimensional analysis thing, is knowing your unit. Because velocity is measured in units of meters per second. Now, what do we measure in meters? Well, we measure distance, don't we? And what do we measure in seconds? Well, we measure time in seconds. And there you have it. There you have your equation that you're going to use to determine the speed or velocity over this 100 meters. That's it. As long as you know the unit of velocity, you can work out what the equation is going to be. V equals m over s. That's units of meters, units of seconds, 
and what corresponds to units of meters, what do we measure in meters, we measure distance. What do we measure in seconds, we measure time. And so therefore, our distance, in this case is 100 meters, our time is 9.58 seconds. And if we do the quick mental calculation, <laughs> we end up with 10.4 meters per second, or as I prefer, meters per second like that, okay? So there's an example of how to work out what equation it is that you're gonna use. It's pretty straightforward, I think, anyway. I think this is a great aid to using equations correctly and figuring out what equation to use. Okay, let's have a look at a little bit more chemical example now and say, right, let's talk about density. Now, density is abbreviated by the Greek letter rho. What's density? Well, let's think of something that's really, really dense, like say gold or lead. They're really, really dense, okay? There's a lot of mass in a very small volume. That's what density has to do with. Density is related to mass, and density is also related to volume. So can we figure out what the equation for density is, knowing that it involves mass and volume? Yes, we can. The one thing we need to know is what is the unit of density? So it's a lot of mass in a particular volume. The unit of density, unit of mass, divided by the unit of volume, kilogram per cubic meter. So that's the unit of density. We then need to put mass and volume together to give those particular units, kilogram per cubic meter. If we can do that, we've got the correct equation. Now, if you think about it, there are three possible ways of going about this. We could say that possibly, if we didn't know better, density is equal to mass times volume, or we could say that density is equal to volume over mass, or we could say that density is equal to mass divided by volume. Those are the only three ways that you can put mass and volume together in order to get this equation. So what do we need to do? We need then to work out what units each of these combinations of volume and mass give us, see which one is correct, and see which of these two are wrong. What do we get if we multiply mass by volume? We're gonna get units of kilograms multiplied by cubic meters. That is not kilograms divided by cubic meters, so this must be wrong, okay? What about if we divide volume by mass? We're gonna get units of cubic meters per kilogram, which is not kilograms per cubic meter, and so that must be wrong, has to be. And so by a process of elimination, this must be the right one. Let's see, we've got units of mass, which is kilogram, units of volume, which is cubic meter, which is the units that we want, okay? So therefore, this has to be the right way round. See, so even if you can't remember the equation that you need to use, you can always work it out. All that you need to know in order to work out the correct equation is knowing the unit of the thing that you want. Okay, in this case, the unit of density was the kilogram per cubic meter. The previous case, the unit of speed or velocity was the meter per second. We're gonna find a whole lot of other examples in chemistry uh, involving a whole lot of other different units, but as long as you can remember the unit you set. And I think remembering units is a lot easier than remembering equations in a lot of cases. So hopefully, You'll use this little trick to great advantage in your exams, which involve these sorts of calculations. So good luck with those, and we'll see you next time.